so okay my camera is two percent but i'm starting a readathon vlog it's a 48 hour weekend readathon i'm a bit behind though because i just started filming and it's like 1 p.m because i slept in um so i'm doing this with m from perfect paperbacks and as you can hear from my voice i was sick all week so i really have not been doing any reading because i've just been feeling awful so today i'm here to do a readathon i do have to film some videos today um but besides that i want to like really get back into reading because i was reading these two books that i didn't like one of them was an essay book which was the anthropocene reviewed which was fine it's just like a very slow moving book like you pick it up and you read an essay here and there and the other book i was reading is once is not enough by jacqueline susan which is an old book and i did not like it but i read it and i finished it for a book club that i had with my friends in college and i feel bad that i didn't like it because my friend like was the one that wanted to read it but um i was not fan so now I'm getting back into like the books that I want to be reading right now and I have a whole March TBR. It's probably up. This video is probably going up after March because I am very backlogged on my videos that I'm posting. Um, but for this weekend, the two prompts. Um, it, it cut out last time, but I'm back. Um, I walked my doggy and ate and I didn't really start anything else. So it's already like almost three and I haven't started reading. Let's not talk about that. Um, so I'm going to start with Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I went to the like virtual signing event that was free on Thursday night and I just adore V.E. Schwab so much. He's literally one of my favorite authors and I'm really intrigued about this book. It's about Olivia Pryor who can't speak and she like just has this journal from her mother and her mother says like you'll be okay as long as you don't go to Gallant and she has no idea what that means. And um, it's just like a book about like doors and like it has illustrations as part of the book so I feel like it's gonna really give me that like dark whimsical style that I love from V.E. Schwab. I also like if you can see this book is like wider than a traditional book. It's so interestingly shaped but I like love it and it's like a book about like shadows and I don't know I just I'm very like intrigued by this and I you know I love V.E. Schwab so We'll see how far I get in this. I might read up to like page 100 and then film my March TBR. And then I have The Simple Wild, which is like a small town steamy romance. And I don't know about you guys, but like with TikTok and like the popularization of like these really like indie dark romances, I was so like swept up in that genre. And now I'm starting to feel like I've been like ignoring my YA fantasies at I tend to, I like dark romance, like don't get me wrong, I like dark romance, but I find that the books that really tend to resonate with me are like the softer romances, so I feel like maybe small town romance will be more my pace, so I actually got this from Maddie, she got sent like an extra copy, and this is actually, it was indie published now, it got acquired by Atria, you will see that a lot, that like, these books that are going viral on TikTok are getting acquired by publishing houses, and so they're no longer indie, uh, published so yeah this is like a small town romance and i don't know too much beyond that and i'm kind of like interested to go into it blind so that's really all that i'm going to try and read this weekend but i'm just feeling like i really just want to get back into my why are you trying to see like i have so many books that are like piled up in my room and i know i'm going to love them when i read them and i just haven't been reading them and i just feel like i've been ignoring the genre that i love and like i was really kind of like despondent about ya for a time i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna read ya again blah blah i need to like learn to not say those kinds of things because i think i just wasn't in the mood for it but that doesn't mean that my mood for it was never gonna return i also think that like due to the way that uh like, supply chain issues and things have been going on there like really weren't a lot of the usually like the YA lineup is just like stacked all year in the beginning of 2022 didn't have like too many releases that were like really catching my eye because like i will admit even though i love YA i tend to only read the things that are like the top list um i don't really read mid list YA too much just because i tend to read more like mid list like indie romances adult things like that like I, if it's YA it basically just needs to be like top of the genre for me to read it and like i will openly admit that so like the books that are getting the most hype with my are the ones that i tend to be reading um but i do try to explore more like different tiers of things in other genres um so yeah so i'm just like so excited for this one I'm, like my heart is just so full of my v.e schwab feels i also just got the near witch by v.e schwab because this is the last book that i needed to complete my collection of hers i actually have like a whole shelf dedicated to her 
Um, this is like her first novel that got a nice like little facelift reprint. And so obviously I would want to read it one day because I have all of the Ishwab's books and I just like, I just adore her. So that's all for now. I'm gonna continue reading, update you guys. I will film my March TBR at some point. So I will like put makeup on, but I will also say I started medication for hormonal acne that I had been struggling with for a while. And I just like, was like, oh, like I'll be able to take care of it with my own skincare routine. And then it had been a year of like revamping my whole skincare routine and it didn't go away. Um, so I went to the dermatologist and I got on, um, not birth control for hormonal acne, but just like a, it's called spirolactone. And I encourage anyone that's struggling with acne that like maybe doesn't want to go to the dermatologist to just give it a chance because it cleared up my skin like instantly. Like I used to have such bad breakouts on my chin that I didn't really feel confident vlogging with no makeup on because of just like how, how bad the breakouts were. And now like I don't really, I haven't been breaking out on my chin. The only thing is I do have some, some redness left over from the fact that I was breaking out there consistently for like a year straight. So obviously that will take a few months to fade, but I'm also using like a retin, uh, retinoid, um, and like I, yeah, you can see Like I would probably also consider maybe going and getting a chemical peel or doing some sort of laser treatment to like help them fade if they're not fading, but it has only been like two, two months since it, like it stopped breaking out in that area. So we'll see, but I'm just like feeling very good and more confident about myself. I okay, so I just got up to page 49 of Gallant. And it definitely has like that very like eerie, dark, fairy tale feeling in this many pages in. And I love it. I love the Ishwa's writing. Like she just has some like very beautiful lines of prose and like it's very dark. And just like the way that she describes Olivia because Olivia is like mute and so she has like a really hard time communicating with the world because people like don't learn sign language or they don't try to communicate with her. So she's like very alone and so she's going to Gallant now and um this book has like a lot of like multimedia things like there's like this but there's also drawings let's see drawing that are like a part of this journal that she has and i love the incorporation of like multimedia stuff i feel like it just like layers onto the story like you can see this is like on the uh page here so like i'm just oh i also did my little book inboxing here so i'm like super into it um, I am gonna film my TBR now though. I like have really taken like a long break from my YouTube Like this is probably going up way after I film it because I just I'm like really backlogged on Videos, so you know that is what it is, but I'm on page 50. I'll see how much further I can get today I might stay up late to read but like this is a book that I'm not gonna try and force myself to read Faster, I'm just gonna spend as much time as I can Reading it and then we'll see how far I get. I don't think I'll finish I, to be honest I don't think I'll finish both but like maybe I can at least start this but like I'm just loving being in this world with this like magical writing and it just made me like realize how much I just like love fantasy like I just love it and I'm reveling in that feeling of loving the genre. So with that I'm gonna go do my makeup and film some videos. I have two I want to film today but we'll see if I do both. I need to at least film my March TBR. I might also do a haul because I just have acquired a lot of books re recently so like it'd be good to do like a little i don't know probably call it like a spring haul because it'll probably be spring by the time the video goes up we'll see but I like put together I just filmed my TBR kind of want to film a haul but we'll see I might film it like later tonight like take a break in between the videos because filming too many at once just like makes me tired and also my voice not great so I'm about to make dinner and then watch a little book too but read more of Gallant we'll see how it goes okay so I guess I didn't start filming last time even though I thought I was talking for like a good while Anyways, uh, this is the first time I'm picking up my camera since last Sunday, so I ended up finishing Gallant. It was five star, 
true V.E. Schwab style, like just a dark haunting tale um, about shadows and doors and where they lead and I ended up really liking it. It's kind of like got found family and like discovering yourself and if you like V.E. Schwab you will like this book. Then I picked up The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker because Maddie had an extra copy that she gave to me and I put it on my March TBR and it's a romance about a girl named Kala that lives in Toronto um, and her estranged father that she hasn't spoken to in 24 years lives in Alaska and basically he finds out that he's dying and so she comes to like see if she can mend their relationship. And while she's there, she encounters Jonah, who is the grumpy bush pilot. Then there are like pilots that are operating these small planes that are out there every day. And like, it was very immersive for like the Alaskan wilderness. I love their relationship. It really wasn't that spicy. I'd give it like a 0.5 chili pepper, but just like really sweet and made me cry at the end. Then I picked up the sequel wild at heart and this one is not really much of a romance novel as much of it's like i would consider it more woman's fiction because it we're following kella and jonah um basically after like the beginning of the whirlwind romance and them in alaska and it was just a really interesting novel in terms of like them figuring out their relationship um, and i haven't read a novel like that in like a really long time so I, it was really enjoyable i think i gave both of them four stars there's like a novella and then another novel that follows like another character that I didn't really like much in these books so we'll see. I'll definitely read the novella at some point but I don't know about the fourth book. In the meantime I picked up King Size and Queen Size by Jessica Kane because I saw these were like recommended on on Avery's channel and these are like just really short novellas. They were like 60 and 80 pages and the first one is about they're like kind of in like these medieval settings and the first one is about this guard to the queen and he basically like pines from her, for her from afar and like her parents just thought and no one's comforting her so like he goes to comfort her and it's like their romance and then the second one is this king who doesn't want to take a wife and then um and this one like the woman is plus size queen size and she is basically at this like festival to find a husband to like help support her sisters in their farm because they had really bad harvest and they can't support themselves and it's just their romance is it's just like really like quick and cute but like steamy so like if you just want something like super quick very easy to digest a little cheesy but like in a fun way i would definitely suggest those two i also started listening to outlander go tell the bees that i am gone so that's the ninth book in the series because a few years ago i read all eight books i need to catch up on the tv show as well i'm a big outlander fan um and like i just know that diana gabaldon has this very long drawn out descriptive writing style and i was like am i gonna like like getting back into it like is it gonna be bad an audiobook but the audiobook is actually very captivating and it's just like you feel so immersed and drawn into their lives even though there's just not like a lot of plot going on like there's so many characters and like the way that they're all interwoven with each other is really masterfully done so i am enjoying it um i'm listening to it on like 2.25 speed uh because if i listen to it any faster like i don't understand when they slip into like the scottish accent for that one i'm at like 39 percent and it's only been a week so i'm actually surprised that i got that far because it is a 49 hour audiobook which is crazy so um I like listen to it on my commute and also like if I go take Gavin for walks on the beach which I might do later so yeah and then I finished Wild at Heart last night after I'd taken a break to read those novellas and now I'm going to go off TBR and pick up Mr. Wrong Number actually I'm going to go off TBR or should I just add this to my TBR so this is like um a wrong number like what are you wearing text and then it's like turned into this romance and like I've heard just like really fun and cute and I'm actually gonna like annotate this but the way I'm gonna annotate it is I'm gonna pick a tab color to match this and then only annotate it with that color so I'm gonna use pink tabs and like pink highlighters and stuff and so I want to get some midliners to like annotate my traditional paperback romances because I think that like I like the look of midlining on like these types of books if that makes sense but I don't have any right now so I'm still gonna underline so then next I have some things to haul Firstly, my friend Yasmin opened a bookmark shop and I'm a rep for her shop. So these are the second batches of designs. Um, the first batch has not arrived yet, but like the quality is so good and these bookmarks are beautiful. Um, she really just does such an amazing job designing these and so I can't wait to get more as she continues to grow her shop. So oh, I think I should have a code. Um, I'll put it in the description below, but please go check it out. It's called Divine Pages and & Co. and I just like love everything and just going to expand more stuff soon. So 
been super fun. Also speaking of places that I have codes for, I have become a Hello Lovely Box rep. I don't know if I mentioned that in like a vlog style video, but I have a code now. It's Katie15, so you can get 15% off your order. So let me show you what I got from them this month. They recently did a drop and I was very excited for all of the new things that they had. <clears throat> so the first item that I got, oh, love these, was these Moody Readers Club joggers. So it's like this on the hip. Oh, and it has pockets. Oh, that's so great. And then it like clinches in at the end, what size did I get? I think I got a medium. Yeah, I got a medium. I'm very excited to wear these because I don't have a lot of like sweatpants like this. Like I have mostly leggings and I realize that sometimes you need sweatpants, not leggings. And I also got this Bibliomania University hat. I'm a big fan of this in the summer. I love wearing hats to the beach and stuff like that. Keeps the sun out of my eyes, amazing. And then, one last thing I have to pull is this new t-shirt and this is part of the collection that just dropped but it's a t-shirt that says main character energy freaking obsessed with it I feel like for my Instagram I kind of want to like go on a nice weekend have this shirt on and like jean shorts and my roller skates and like take a picture uh, over like near the beach. I think that would be so cute for the gram. So I'm gonna have to rope Alex into doing that for me. My on-site photographer. If only I could train Gavin to take pictures for me, huh? But I feel like that would be very main character. So now the plan is to go film a book haul. I actually won't need to post it for like another while because I'm very backlogged on videos, but I want to film it so I can put the books away and then I'm gonna read Mr. Wrong Number for the rest of the evening. That's also, sorry if this is a jarring transition, but I realized I had some footage from a while ago that I never ended up putting in a vlog, so I'm gonna put it in the beginning here. And this was when I was trying to do like a 24 hour, 72, I don't even remember how many hours readathon, and then I kind of gave up on the vlog, and then starting my April vlog. So that is why there is this sharp transition from like, there's probably a month in between these clips, but it's fine. Hello and welcome. I'm gonna be starting a vlog for the month of April, which is my birth month. So I'm just very excited about all the things that I have coming up soon and I have like a bunch of stuff to start off hauling this vlog with. Um, please go check out my April TBR if you want to know what is coming up for me but right now I'm like really focused on just reading Sophie Lark's books because I'm obsessed. I already read my first book of April which was Savage Lover by Sophie Lark. This is the third in the Brutal Birthright series which follows the Gallows and the Griffins in modern day Chicago and they are the Italian and Irish mafia families but with like other kinds of mafia tied in and so this third one follows Nero and he's like the reckless badass uh sibling in the Italian mafia family and his like love interest is named Camille Rivera and she's like this really poor mechanic that works in her father's auto shop and it's their romance it was so good it's like they bond over their love of cars so there's like love car scenes and like oh just it's always so action-packed really easy to get through like really fun and so i will be continuing on the brutal birthright series and i'm just gonna keep reading these books until like i feel like i need to switch but i just like kind of want to read through a lot of her stuff so i am now going to be reading bloody heart which is uh, about Dante and he's the oldest of the Italian Mafia siblings, the Gallows, and he like is a war veteran and it's like he spent a lot of time in like Iraq and apparently that like really hardened him like but he's like usually the muscle of the family, he's the eldest son and this is the second chance romance between him and like his ex-girlfriend so see um i do want to point out a few things that i have to haul so in the mail this week i got xoxo by axie o this is like the cutest look at the hardcover the cutest ya contemporary um it's about jenny and jayu and jenny is like this cello prodigy and jayu is a k-pop star but when they meet each other like she doesn't know that he's a k-pop star and he's in this group called xoxo and it's their romance and it's like about identity and like cultures and oh 
it was just the cutest thing ever i listened to it on audio while i i had to do like a work shift over the weekend so i was just like in lab literally listening to my audiobook all day it was great i love this style book so much i'm listening to a lot of like very cute audios on audio like YA contemporaries and I realize like that's the way that I really like to enjoy YA contemporaries but like if I like like it enough I will feel compelled to buy it even though I don't usually like I don't have a big YA contemporary uh, collection with this one like it really got to me and there's a few that I've coming up in April that I plan on reading that I feel like I will really like so the first one that I'm going to be reading is um a fa love story by Loan Lee because it's like Keely's favorite YA contemporary book that she's read recently and I mean Keely a BFF so I'm like okay I will read your favorite book so that's gonna be the first audiobook that I start on um so another book that I hauled is the hardcover version of Guild I also have the paperback which I love and I want to collect both hardback and paperback um yeah like look at this like oh so pretty these like indie published books are like really changing the game I feel like um, but the paperback is also really nice. I I didn't put this on my April TBR, but I feel like I am maybe going to try and read it in May because the fourth one is coming out, so it would be nice to read one through four in May. But I, yes, I'm obsessed with this. I just love fantasy romance, if you know me. Speaking of fantasy romance, I have this package here from Amazon. Let's open her up. The first book that I have is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup and this is a fantasy romance where the main characters are in their 30s which I feel like there is a huge gap in the market for those kinds of fantasy romances and I am like very excited and oh the dedication says for the mothers who still dream to be part of the fairy tale and for me and so it says a mother will do anything to save her child no matter the cost so Emmeline High Claire's daughter is prophesied to bring key peace to the three kingdoms, but she's taken by the enemy, so she'll do anything to get her back. I mean, I'm not a mother myself, but like, I'm close with my mom, so that's just so far up close to the heartstrings. Okay, then we have What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods, and the author actually reached out to me um, and gave me an arc, and I just never like got around to reading it because I am busy, but like, I like was very interested in it from the first time, so I was like, you know what? instead of reading my like er copy i'm just gonna buy it straight out and support the other because i just like love the premise of this story so the tagline is once we'd worship them as gods and so for nearly 400 years the veil has protected us from the fey of elf hamir beautiful uh, i just love I love fantasy romance like I want to start a whole fantasy romance collection which is why I bought these two even though I haven't read them yet well really like these these three because I haven't read them yet um because like it's just I don't know it's just the genre where I just like literally have the most fun and just like love the books so much along with like obviously regular fantasy as well but I feel like fantasy romance is really becoming bigger and it's really like capturing my heart but I obviously love like dark romance I love dark romance too and like ah uh. so another thing to point out is this sweatshirt is from hello lovely and i also have these you really can't see it i'm gonna stand on my office chair this is like not really safe um but these sweatpants they're joggers and it says moody readers club and like the end you really can't see that but um they're like cinched at the ankles which is so great for me because i'm short so even though i'm short like they don't like go down my feet because they're cinched at the ankles and there's just some bagginess in the like length of it because i am so short and the last thing that i have to show you guys today is wild is the witch pr box from source books um it says he's falling in love with the girl he is supposed to hate yes so if we open this up really like to open this up. Tropes inside. Forced proximity, loath to love, meddling owl, secret identity, there's only one tent, oh no you're hurt, and contemporary fantasy. And they have like little emojis to go along with that. I think that is the cutest thing in a PR package. Then I have a mug that says Foggy Mountain Wildlife Refugee and a little kind bar, a mini one that fits right in the mug. So cute. Lots of bubble wrap. I will be saving this if I ever need to ship like books or anything like that. I just need <laughs> the bubble wrap from the PR packages that I have stored up so far. And then here is a Wild as a Witch. It is like the most buttery proof. I love it. 
and so Rachel Griffin wrote Nature of Witches which I read last year kind of on a whim because Source had sent me a finished copy and I was like okay I'll read it and I fell in love with it like it was like contemporary fantasy but it really like had a lot of themes that resonated with me and like the love interest was just the soft boy and like I loved it um so now in this one this is also contemporary fantasy with witches but a completely different world there's a mad a night of magic that has turned deadly so now iris won't let anyone know that she's a witch she like hides in washington and she vents her frustrations by writing curses she never intends to cast and she works on the on a wildlife refugee with her mother but she loathes pike alder the witch hating aspirating orthonologist who interns with them pike makes a like hurtful comment to iris and so iris like concocts a curse for him but before she can like get rid of it an owl like swoops down and steals the curse and the owl is a powerful amplifier so if the owl dies iris's spell will be unleashed not only on pike but on everyone in the region so now they have to work together to get the owl i really love that rachel griffin's books incorporate nature in them and like if you just love like like nature and just like that feeling of like the great outdoors and like witchy like which is being connected with the earth i think that you will really enjoy this um and enjoy both of her books like she's definitely become an autobi author for me and i'm so excited so now my plan for the rest of the day i started bridgerton season two because i actually just finished reading uh the second book the viscount who loved me uh like two days ago um it was one of my last reads of march and um i was obsessed with it like in season one and in book one, there is that weird dub con plot line that just kind of makes things a little bit icky. So we don't have that in this season. And I heard that they made some really great changes. I'm obsessed with Simone Ashley, who plays Kate Sharma. Obsessed. Obsessed. And I love that the Bridgerton show, obviously, just going off of the books, like, they need to add more plot lines. So, like, we have the whole plot line of the Queen and, like, the Lady Whistledown stuff becomes, like, even more prominent uh, with things that aren't necessarily happening in, the, happening in the book. And, like, I just love all of it. Like, the set design, the costumes, the music, like, it is all just so beautiful. And I, the chemistry between Kate and Anthony is already sizzling and like i i literally just sat there and like squealed while i was watching and i'm gonna continue to do that for the rest of the seven episodes that i have to watch so so excited then i also want just wanted to give a quick shout out to my friend yasmin she's been here on booktube for forever and she just opened a bookmark shop and these bookmarks are like so high quality they're beautiful her shop is called divine pages and co i will leave a link down below and i I honestly just wanted to turn on my camera today because I look cute, feeling very springy. So I just finished the live show for the Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood on Chanel's channel. It was a really fun discussion. I was the only one that gave it five stars, but um, it was really fun to like describe, discuss the finer points of it. I didn't change my rating of it or anything, but I just love talking to people about books and I haven't done a live show in a long time, so it was really fun. And I spent all morning reading Bloody Heart by Sophie Lark. I think I've just kind of decided I'm just going to like read as much of her as I want until I feel like I need to switch. But like I'm obsessed with Bloody Heart so this follows Dante, the oldest brother, and he is like so broody and this is a second chance romance so the book starts off like following him and his like first love and then something happens and then it's nine years later and just the, the angst, the scale, like everything that is happening, like it is so good. Like. I was gonna like stop reading and watch Bridgerton. Um, instead, I just kept reading. I was like, I'll, I'll watch Bridgerton later, which anything separating me from the last few episodes of Bridgerton like has to be good. So I am like pretty much almost done with stuff that I have to get done today. I am going to probably eat a snack and then um, I want to just like film like a few TikToks. So I have stuff for the week. So I'm gonna try and film like seven and then call it a day because I like to stay up with TikTok, but like, is it going to be my top platform going forward that I put a lot of effort into? I don't know. I've been going back and forth. Like, it can be a low effort platform to maintain, but it can also be like kind of like annoying when things don't do well and like it's very hit or miss based on the algorithm. It's like, eh, like, do I want to put all my eggs in that basket? I don't know. I'd rather just stick with YouTube that I've been doing for a long time and my Instagram is doing pretty well. I'm trying to do better at like taking fancy photos and flat lays and like incorporating that with also pictures of my face. So like 
making my theme more consistent, shall I say. I think I'm just gonna like literally eat, spend like 10 to 20 minutes on TikTok and like just low effort stuff. And then I'm gonna go take my dog for a walk and then work out and then I have the whole evening to myself. I'm gonna cook some dinner, gonna watch Bridgerton and then at 9 p.m. I'm watching a 17 concert which I didn't get to watch last weekend um, because it was at 4 a.m. And I woke up, my Wi-Fi wasn't working and I was like, no, I will just watch it at 9 p.m. next week, the like replay of it so it's not live. But I'm very excited for that and I have friends that I'm watching it with so we will like text as we stream it. So those are my plans for the day. I have been, oh, yesterday I watched five episodes of Bridgerton season two. I love it so much more than season one. I like season one, but season two is just so much better. Like we don't have that dub con like weirdness going on. The chemistry between Kate and Anthony is just like off the charts. They definitely did change things from the book, but I think maybe for the better, I think they drew out the conflict a lot. Um, they kind of did Edwina a little dirty. She's a little bit more, um, I don't know, in, in conflict with her sister, whereas like in the book their relationship was very like smooth, but I can see like why they beefed up her character and it definitely made it a more interesting role for an actor to take on and I think the actresses that play Kate and Edwina like, are doing such a fantastic job, I mean as well as the actor for Anthony. <sighs> All of it, it's just so wonderful and I'm loving the way that like they're building up the stories leading up to the other romances, so I'm like really just like loving watching the show. Apparently they're also going to do a spin-off series about a young Queen Charlotte. Very interested to see how that will go because I don't think there's like really source material for it but um, I just love like the set design, the costumes, the glitz and the glam. It's wonderful. So like I said, a very Bridgerton and Sophie Lark weekend and I'm just enjoying myself, having so much fun. The weather is so beautiful today so I can't wait to get out there and walk my dog on the beach and just have a wonderful, lovely day. It is Tuesday and I finished the Brutal Birthright series. I honestly sped through the last four books but I loved them so much. Um, I forget what I last talked about but Riona and Raylan's book might have been my favorite because it was like the cowboy with the uptight girl and like oh, so good and then the last one was about Sebastian who is the um, youngest son in the Italian Mafia family and Yelena which is the daughter of the Bravo boss and it was like lots of twists and turns and a really intense finale to the uh, series and I can't wait I'm gonna start Kingmakers right away so Kingmakers Academy is like a mafia academy and all of these people that we followed in the Brutal Birthright series their children are going to Kingmakers Academy and the rule is like you can't like harm anyone on the grounds but besides that like it's all up in the air and I'm excited to see like where it's gonna take me and there's five books in the series the fifth one just came out um, and the first one follows the son of the couple in book six so it's like going right from that couple to their son and I'm so excited so I'm gonna start with the air so I'm about to go work out and then those are my evening plans maybe some bullet journaling as well but I did get some book mail I wanted to talk about source books Casablanca sent me a promise of fire by Amanda Boucher with the new covers this is a new adult fantasy romance and I'm very excited to have this new cover because I've had my eye on this book for like a while and um, I think they're like the whole trilogy is getting new covers, so love that. Thank you so much for sending this my way. And then I also got an arc of Forging Silver into Stars. So this is the spin-off series of A Curse of Dark and Lonely, which I loved. This is massive. This is bigger than any of the A Curse of Dark and Lonely books. So yeah, I will probably read this in May. Yeah, because it's out in May. Um, she's very thick very very thick <laughs> um but yeah that's my update and those are my plans okay this has to be quick because i have no camera battery apparently but i finished the brutal birthright series phenomenal i'm obsessed and now i'm moving on to kingmakers which is the next generation and they all go to this mafia school where you can either be sorted into heirs um accountants spies and enforcers and the first one is like a friends to lovers following the children of two of the couples in the first Brutal Birthright series, I am obsessed. It gives me Zodiac Academy vibes. It's our TikTok that I made here. Um, I love it. I finished the first one today, five stars. I'm just like Oprah giving out five stars, like she gives out cards to Sophie Lark's books. Um, so I am going to continue on with the series, so I have to read The Rebel. And then after that one, you're supposed to read Yvonne and Snow, but I already read Yvonne, so I would just read Snow. Um, the Spot. 
the bully and then the spy. I really want to get to the bully because Dean is in the first book and he's like an anti-hero. And I'm very intrigued by his story. Also, um, each book has three POVs, which is definitely really interesting for a romance book. So it really just expands the scope a lot. And I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with all of these books. This is basically turning into Sophie Lark of Vlog. Hello, okay. I am 65% of the way through The Rebel, which is the second book in the Kingmaker series by Sophie Lark. And I'm obsessed. It's so good. In this one, we follow Miles, who is the son of the couple from Brutal Prince and the Brutal Birthright series. And he falls in love with this girl and that is in a marriage contract um to this like really like psychopathic guy and so he's trying to break her out of the marriage contract but i love the setting of the school i will say in the series there's just like a lot more side characters and a lot more things going off the side characters and you can really tell that sophie lark is maturing in her craft which is amazing and wonderful and i am just like loving it like i've read 65 percent like since last night so and then so after this one i do need to read snow before i continue on to the bully but i really want to get to the bully because i'm so intrigued by that book it's dean and cat's book and like so there's three povs in every book and so this third pov is um cat and so we get to know her character and she's like she's zoe's little sister and she's and Zoe is like the the girl in um, Love Interest in the Rebel, and she's like very timid, but like has to, like, basically is like force good kingmakers. So I'm like really loving seeing her come out of her shell, and like I'm so intrigued about the story between her and Dean. But yeah, these books are just like so immersive, and like I just love them. My plan is to maybe finish the Rebel and start Snow because I want to like read the bully this weekend and then i'll have two kingmakers books left i definitely need to get physical copies um i just don't know when that will happen also snow is like much shorter than the kingmakers books it's like 300 pages so snow is about this fighter and this is a, this is a bravo story so in russia and it's about this fighter and like he doesn't feel anything in the ring and then he meets sasha who like doesn't really belong in the mafia world interested to see because he's definitely going to make like a reappearance in these later books and then of course we have the last book the spy and like there's nothing in the description like you don't know who the spy is and i'm not going to look at reviews because i don't want to know who the spy is so i don't know like the fourth book who any of the people are and like people don't say who they are so people have been really good about not spoiling it so i'm obviously not going to spoil it but i'm just very curious so my plan for this evening is I need to work out because I'm trying to be really good about my exercise routine for my mental health. And then I'm just going to get back to read. Like, that's literally all I want to do reading. I do need to, like, organize things. But um, I decided today is for relaxing and tomorrow is for doing chores. That's it. Just, yeah, just being mafia romance addicted. Sophie Lark addicted. I'm obsessed. That's all I have to say. I am obsessed. Obsessed. Got my Kindle. I'm wondering if I should like get stickers for the back of my Kindle. Um, because while I do like this pop socket look, I've seen some with pop sockets and stickers. I don't know. We'll see. But I am just liking like uh, the pop socket. I have to tell you, it is such, such a game changer. Like I was always like like the case, but with this, like the convenience of reading like this when I'm in bed or like on the subway because like on my way to and from work on the subway I always have my Kindle up but I have to transfer lines a few times just being able to like pick up my Kindle and go like this absolute game changer like, I'm gonna do go do some kickboxing and like pretend that I'm like a super badass mafia heir in the Kingmakers Academy and that's gonna motivate me to like work out and be amazing so Hello. Hello friends. So I just got my nails done. I just got my nails done. I am obsessed. Let me tell you about what I read. So I read The Rebel. It's wonderful, but like you're getting hints of the couple in book three, The Bully, which is a bully romance. And like, I feel like it's going to be really well done. A lot of people hype it up. So I did, however, go back and read some of the Underworld series because all three series are connected. Um, 
Officially, you only have to read Yvonne and Snow, but Maddie told me it would be better to read Roman and Dom as well. So I was like, okay, I'll read them. So I read Snow and it's about Sasha and she like, her father gets into debt with the Bratva. So like she barters to be like their uh, doctor because she just got out of medical school and she falls for one of the boxers at the underground Bratva fighting rings. It was so like sweet and cute and like I loved it and it like motivated me to do my kickboxing workout yesterday and then I just finished Roman and that's like a bully romance but it's like very light on the bull like I've read some bully romances that are like, bully romances and I think that's what the bully is going to be but Roman is just about like this guy and this girl and like he did bully her a little bit in high school but it's kind of like more in the past and then it's about them reconnecting in Paris because he's the head of the Paris Bratva I just finished that while I got my nails done. I kind of finally mastered the art of reading on my Kindle and getting my nails done at the same time. So love that for me. It, I feel like it made the time go by a lot quicker than just like sitting there staring at his face because I never know what to do when I'm getting my nails done. Now I'm going to start Dom, which he is the brother of Yvonne from book one. And I think it's like a captor, captive situation. I don't remember. I need to look at the summary. But then after that, I will start be starting the bully. So maybe probably tomorrow. I also tend to speed through these because I read them on the train and I have about like a 40 minute train ride. So like that's over an hour every day to read them just like in my free time. And I also read them at lunch at work because what else am I going to do on my lunch hour? So yeah, I've just been speeding through them. I've been loving my Sophie Lark. Just wanted to come in and give a quick update. Okay, hello. Have not updated in a while. It is currently very nice outside, so I am sitting and reading, and I am up to the savage. So I read the bully and the spy, and I just started the savage. So let me give you my thoughts. Um, the bully was my favorite book in the series so far. Um, it was incredible. It was probably the only bully romance that like has truly captivated me. Like I've liked bully romances that I've read in the past, but this is the best one. I've ever read definitely has like way more like kinkier stuff in it like Dom's Hub. Um, it was incredible like just the character possession of he of Dean from the first book to the third book was amazing and I love Kat as a character. Um, she really like grew on me and like oh I just loved I just loved their story and then the third perspective in this because all books have three POVs is the spy and you don't know who the spy is and then everything comes together in the fourth book called the spy which i can't even explain to you what it's about um but it has like it's like the culmination of all of these right and so like it was just incredible i guessed correctly like who the spy was and like if you were paying attention throughout all the books like you would get it but oh my goodness it was everything it had such like i would say this one maybe focused a little bit more on like the action i definitely did like the romance as well but like dean and cat are just like my absolute favorite um but like there's definitely more like family stuff and like the action was just like amazing so now i'm starting the savage which is a book that was not originally planned for this series um and it follows adrian petrov and sabrina gallo and they are like fire with fire so they're both these fiery characters and they were side characters in the other books and people wanted them so much that sophie was like okay i'll write a book about them and sabrina is bi and so we get ff and ffm things in this what's kind of annoying is that sophie lark like when this book was released basically had to come out and like say that she was bisexual as well because people were like saying that she was just doing it like gratuitously which i that is just like so disheartening and annoying to me like authors shouldn't have to like come out with their sexualities to like be seen as valid also like if you read the book it's very like clear that she's not doing this for like a gratuitous thing and like sabrina's character like is bi and it even says that she has more of a preference like she leans more towards liking women but she just has this like very fiery romance with adric and it's just like very it's just very annoying that people were like that um but yeah i read the first steamy scene the ffm scene um and it was less than 20 percent in and like wow okay she definitely did her research that's that's all i'm gonna say say hi again yeah, I'm saying hi. Okay, is that interesting anymore? It's really good. Um, I was just talking to Maddie, and she says this is like one of the books that has like the most steamy scenes in it. So, looking forward to that. 
So I'm just gonna chill, just took this guy out for a little walkie and then we're just gonna relax, look at the beach, enjoy this like, beautiful weather, this beautiful day. Good time, reading the savage. Well, I literally have like two seconds before I have to go to work, but I wanted to update and say I'm reading What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods, who is another pen name for Adelaide Forest. And I'm obsessed. It's a fantasy romance. Um, there's this veil separating the humans from the fae, and when it falls, um, the humans become fae marked, and like humans hunt them down because if the fae get their mates, they like get really powerful. So she meets another fae marked man, and they are on the run. It's so good. I also changed my annotation system a bit. I should make like a TikTok or something about my annotation system because I never felt like it was long enough to make a YouTube video. And maybe I'll make a YouTube video one day. But anyways, I changed it for this book. Because I was like, I don't know if I want to do my whole annotation system, but I do want to underline quotes that I like. So I just picked a tab color that matches the book and I'm underlying quotes that I like. And I like that simpler method for when I don't like feel like I need to underline everything and I just want to underline the quotes that I like. So that is like an alternate annotation method. Eh, maybe I'll make a YouTube video on it. I don't know. But anyways, I do need to go to work now, but... I just really wanted to talk about this book because I love fantasy romance so much. Like, it is my shit. I'm obsessed with it. So, like, yes, I should be making another fantasy romance rec video soon as well. But yeah, this chef's kiss, I'm obsessed. I have some thoughts. I finished What Lies Beyond the Veil. It is a fey fantasy romance. I loved it. It was so twisty and turny. There was some really fun banter in here. Um, it had some twists that were like pretty obvious straight up, but I still love them. And I did manage to be surprised in the end. So like I only guessed a part of what happened. So I was happy about that. So yeah, loved this five stars. I think there's going to be maybe four books in the series. I'm obsessed. I like can't wait. I, you know me. I love my fantasy romance. So I... We'll be anxiously awaiting. Next one's probably going to be out in August, like every six months. Can't wait. Then I started between... Oh, 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 hit myself in the face of book. Okay, I started between Wrath and Mercy, which I'm so excited for this one because it is a fantasy romance centering on characters who are in their 30s. And I feel like, you know, there's not a lot of fantasy romance with characters in their 30s. And it's about a mother as well. So we follow Emmeline, who her daughter is like the chosen one and gets taken. And so she will do anything to get her daughter back, which means she needs the help of a man she like swore she would never see again. And so far it's like set up really interestingly with the magic system, like straight from the beginning. Um, it is it is chunky. It's, let's see how many pages. 500 pages looking forward to seeing where this goes i don't know if this is a series or a standalone but i'm very excited i started it on the train on my kindle because it is on kindle unlimited so let's see how far i got okay so i'm only on page 33 so i didn't really get that far but loving the vibes so far um and it's like apparently a second chance romance as well which is ah i just like feel like i haven't seen those things in a fantasy romance oh freaking so excited love this genre so yes, I'm about to go out to dinner and get some nice burgers. Very hungry, but I'm not gonna have a snack if I'm about to have a big ass burger. Uh, B A B. Oh, also today, I got Maddie and I Straight Kids tickets. If you've seen some of my past vlogs, you've been maybe noticing that Maddie and I have gone to like a bunch of K-pop concerts together so far this year, and that theme is continuing because we're going to Monster X in May and now Stray Kids in June and we got four seats. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Literally K-pop just gives me all the serotonin. I will spend all my money on concert tickets. I used to spend a lot of money on collecting K-pop albums because I have the soul of a collector. I mean, just look at my bookshelves. Um, but I've had to scale way back because I'm like, okay, look, I, look, this is a lot. So I would rather spend that money on going to concerts and those kinds of experiences. So I'm very excited. And it's right after ALA, which I'm going to with Maddie, Soleil, and Steph. And I'm so excited. I think we're just going to have so much fun. Oh, it's just going to be a great time all around. So that is my little update for now. Also, it's my birthday on Tuesday. I think I'll be putting this vlog up like on my birthday. So I'm old now. Hello. I am really tired and I want to take a nap because yesterday I went to see the 17 movie with my friend Taz. And that was so much fun. 
And then today we tried to go to the museum, tickets were sold out, so we went to this like more food hall place and it was really fun, but now I'm sleepy. So I have been reading Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. I am on page, let's see, 211 and there's like 500 pages. I love it so far, like thank you, it's just my thing you know it's my favorite genre and what's really good about this one is that it almost reads like a high fantasy but obviously like spicy like you could have published this with like a high fantasy publisher and i wouldn't have batted it an eye it's just independently published and like fancy romance spicy because it is getting a little spicy but it's very intricately detailed really great world building the stakes are high and it also follows the journey of a mother and its second chance romance and that's just such something we don't see in fantasy very often like at all so i'm loving it i'm gonna keep reading it but i'm gonna end the vlog here um thank you for watching i think i'm going to continue with like my monthly vlog formats because i think that they're really fun so i will be starting a new vlog soon maybe on my birthday on tuesday which is the day that this vlog will be posted but in the meantime that's fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one <laughs>